Soil by Andrew de Pasqua. I felt the hands come for me. Cold, long shadows from the ground, like reapers from below the dark soil reaching to collect their harvest. I stayed on the wet ground, not because I wanted to, but because my body failed me. As my mind tried desperately, but unsuccessfully, to urge my falling limbs to budge, the sound of steady rain on autumn trees was now my only worldly companion. The drops splashed and fell with a sound so pure I could not tell if they mocked or mourned me. It was as if a solid weight, a ball of iron, had pushed my chest towards my neck. Pulling me deeper towards the soft rain-filled earth, the dark hands now easily finding hold, their grasp delicate and controlled, an oar guiding a boat over a morning lake, but solid as the anchor pulling down my tired chest. I can feel myself begin to sink as the hands pull me down through the damp dirt. My useless legs are the first to be pulled below the ground, guiding my torso and the rest of me slowly after. The wet, soily dross begins to obscure my vision, while I feel my body pulled slowly deeper. The sound of the rain begins to fade. Halloween Harvest by Andrew de Pasqua from the fields we pull in the harvest, autumn in all its ways following, soon behind every swing. A hollow moon like a lantern in the sky covers the hills with burnt orange hues, trees with bare and twisted limbs, shedding their leaves to cover the roads and yards with their yellow and red quilted blanket. Fall winds, like a returning visitor, blow crisp while the souls slowly creep in the night. The Mysterious Person by Ranvi Hothi A man walking on the street all alone. It was the night of Halloween. He was walking with fear, maybe the fear of being seen. He trembled as he heard footsteps. Was someone following him? He hadn't noticed that a boy was watching from across the street. Had he stolen something? or done some evil deed? With those questions in mind, the boy bravely, perhaps stupidly, asked, Trick or treat. The man quivered with fear, as if it was a ghost he had seen. The man offered his bracelet, and said, It's all he had. The boy asked if he was okay. Abruptly, the man said, No. I am lost. This is not where I belong. The boy asked where he lived. He said across the block. Something terrifying, the boy realized, so he ran away from the man. As he was running ahead, he heard faint footsteps, but the man hadn't moved an inch. Were those the same footsteps he heard before? The footsteps grew louder, as if something was right next to him. The boy reached home in terror, a strange interaction he had experienced. He found the bracelet in his pocket. He didn't remember taking it from the man. The bracelet felt heavier. Then somehow, it shook. The spooked boy looked out the window. The man was standing in their yard. The sound of footsteps came back. The boy screamed in agony, until the pain was all but lost. Rotted Fields of Turpitude by E. N. Tuboy Sunflowers surround their straw father, swaying in the field and sharp wind, which wheezes through its tattered coat, fills the air with rustles and whispers. The aged straw thing grins, and its cruel smile, bleeding and fading, beckons with hollow promises, as its flowers throw wisps of encouragement from below. Eerie creaks and groans of its wood frame, clothed by heavy coat and frayed hat and rotting straw and burlap head hiding horrors within. Join in the somber song of the sunflowers. No heed to the light, fashioned from false origins, they follow an invisible sun, creeping slowly to face some unseen source. While the shadow of the scarecrow towers amidst them, wretched and ragged thing, with stained straw oozing from stitches and seams, whose howling silence like a death omen 
Knoll's tranquility in a plague of looming darkness. In the dead of night, baked in cold moon glow, the straw creature basks in its macabre garden, where vile malice and the stench of death seep to the dirt path afar, like an ashen weed perverted and depraved. They writhe through the night, those children of the void, festering in the still dark, as the scarecrow readies its aged bones.